Thank you for attending today's Lunch and Learn on e-prescribing in Genie. My name is Sean Nolan, and I am the Customer Education Specialist here at Genie Solutions. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians on land which we stand. For me in Brisbane, this is the Turbal and the Yagara peoples. I would like to also pay my respects to Elders past, present, and emerging. There are a few items on today's agenda. I am going to talk about the requirements of using the e-prescribing system. What do you need to do in Genie to use e-prescribing? Some of you on this call may be brand new to using MIMS or prescribing in Genie, so I'll be covering how you can use these. I also hope to upskill some of our existing users on this call by showing them the script archives and the quick scripts. We will have a demonstration on how to send a medication as an e-prescription and how to modify the e-prescription as well. The last 15 minutes will be our live question and answers where I will be joined by Alexi, the National Customer Training Manager and Trillian, the Genie Business Analyst. Please submit your questions relating to e-prescribing in the chat box during the presentation. During the question and answers, we will do our best to cover as many questions as possible. But if we do miss your question, there will be a survey at the end where you can resubmit. To use e-prescribing, there are a fairly significant number of steps. So I'm going to spend a few minutes going through this checklist of requirements. First, you need to update Genie to the latest version. You may need to update your Genie password if it doesn't match security requirements. After that, register and link a number of items outside of Genie. Register with MIMS and ERX, then activate e-prescribing in Genie. The first requirement is to update your version of Genie. This is our biggest release ever of Genie, with thousands of hours of developer time invested into this version. This version allows for compatibility with the new Mac operating systems, including Catalina to Ventura. The letter writer window has had a complete rewrite to be compatible with the new version of 4D Write from our database manufacturer. There are a significant number of other changes in this Genie update, but also a few things practices need to do in addition to the update. We will be sending this information in an email after the presentation, so you can follow the information in the email rather than taking note here. You'll need to ensure you reconfigure your practice letterhead and your user preference letterheads. Existing letter templates should be unaffected. You will need to reconfigure Genie backups as the way backups are handled inside Genie has changed. If you use My Health Record currently through NASH certificates, there's a transition needed to SHA2 certificates. There are a number of other significant changes in Genie version 10 not listed here. Staff should ensure to read the list of changes on our website to be familiar with what has changed. It is also recommended your computer hardware is checked to make sure it meets our system requirements. When using e-prescribing, there is additional password security required. This is, of course, your Genie password. We require at least eight characters, and of those eight, at least one uppercase letter and one number. You may be wondering why a secure password is required. Australia is one of the most targeted countries for cybercrime, and a strong password for all users ensures your data is better protected. A strong password is also required by AHDA. A paper prescription with a signature is the doctor proving that they created the prescription. A user account logging in with the password is seen as the digital equivalent. Any of the passwords listed here match the requirements. Now you don't have to worry. These aren't my personal passwords, so nobody on the score is going to be able to take over my LinkedIn. But it is just a demonstration on how you can make an easy yet secure password. I also ask, that nobody on this call uses the passwords listed here. Otherwise, you might find somebody else on this call might very well get access to your account. There are a significant number of registrations that are required. If you're using the My Health Record system, you may have already done one, most, or all of these registrations. 
My Health Record and ePrescribing are initiatives of the Australian Digital Health Agency. Proda and HPOS are used for the management of digital entities such as HPI, meaning individual, and HPIO, meaning organization. These need to be linked to a contracted service provider, which is Genie Solutions. This allows Genie to communicate with services for ePrescribing. We will be sending the list of registrations and steps required in an email after this presentation. Each prescriber at your practice must have a valid MIMS subscription to use ePrescribing. This ensures that you are complying with the recent active ingredient prescribing legislation and that all necessary medicine information is uploaded electronically when you prescribe. If you already have a MIMS integrated subscription and utilize the MIMS database when prescribing in Genie, you don't have to do any additional steps. New users to MIMS and those who have recently upgraded to version 10 will need to download the MIMS integrated through the special menu. When prescribing medicines electronically using e-prescribing, the usual legal paper prescription is replaced with an electronic prescription data that is then stored in a prescription exchange service, PES. This PES is managed by a third-party company. For our e-prescribing release, we are integrating with the ERX PES. When you register with ERX, you will be given an ERX entity ID, which needs to be entered in the user preferences of the prescriber. After an electronic prescription is created in Genie, it will be transmitted and stored in the PES in an encrypted format. Once this legal prescription is in the exchange, pharmacies can use conformant dispensing systems to retrieve the prescription data and complete the dispensing. There are a few items you need to configure in Genie once the registrations have been completed. You need to ensure your practice preferences are set correctly including the HPIO inserted. You need to configure the user preferences of the prescribing data. This includes the prescriber number, specialist type, and HPI. You will also need to configure the ERX sender ID. You need to ensure your password is strong. And finally, activate ePrescribing. You will need to ensure your patients have the correct demographic fields inserted. This includes name, address, date of birth, and the email or mobile phone to send the script to. Other requirements include IHI number, Medicare number, or a DVA card color and number. If the patient requires close the gap, otherwise known as CTG, indicated on their prescription, it is located in the secondary tab. There are two additional considerations depending on which state your practice is in. If you're in Western Australia, only the Genie Administrator can configure users for e-prescribing. This means if your Genie Administrator is unable to access Genie, you will not be able to configure e-prescribing. If you are in Tasmania, after you complete the registrations, you will need to submit a request to us to enable e-prescribing. It is disabled by default in Tasmania, enabled for all other states. There are a few steps to creating an e-prescription for a patient. Some of you may be prescribing in Genie for the first time or using the MIMS database for the first time. First, I will show you how to use the MIMS database to create a prescription. We have a very useful tool called QuickScripts, which will save you time in creating any prescription in the future. We will initiate the e-prescribing process, and I will show you what an e-prescription looks like on the patient's mobile phone. I will introduce you to the script archive and how you can resend and cancel e-prescriptions. To create an e-prescription, we first open the relevant patient's clinical file. In the medications area, we click the plus button. We search for a few letters of the medication we wish to prescribe. In this instance, it is cephalaxin. We double-click on the variant we wish to prescribe. 
and we type in the dose, frequency, and instructions as relevant. We click the Save button, which makes the medication appear in the medications list. If this is a medication used frequently, we can save it to the Quick Scripts list for better efficiency. To do this, we have to set up the Quick Script first. We click on Plus. Next, we search for the medication we are using frequently. In this instance, I'm searching for fluconazole. I double click on the variant I want, and I type in the dose, frequency, and instructions as relevant. Next, I click on the Add to Quick Script button. Nothing appears after you click it. This is normal. I'm now going to click Cancel. And if I click the Quick Script drop down menu, any future patient can have this medication prescribed by choosing it from the list. I can also delete Quick Script menu options by clicking the menu. If you're using Windows, you will need to hold the Alt key. If you're using a Mac, hold the Option key. Whilst you're holding the key, click the Quick Script to delete. Let go of Alt or Option afterwards. It is deleted. Now, to create an e-prescription, I first ensure the medication I wish to e-prescribe is ticked on the left, and I click on the new e-prescription button. Initial checks are done for the patient and practice, including verifying the patient's IHI number. A new window will appear. On the right hand side, I'm going to keep these options as the default, but if you need to change an option for any reason, this is the window where it takes place. From here, I'm going to make sure I've got the right phone number. I ticked SMS. I ticked confirm the details are correct. And this sends an SMS to the patient. This creates the e prescription. There were other options in that menu. I am going to come back to those later in the presentation. An SMS or email is sent to the patient's phone. The patient can open this link and the pharmacy will scan the code and dispense the medication. If I wanted to create a new instance of the medication, for example, a repeat prescription, I need to ensure that the right medication is ticked on the left-hand side. And I click the e-prescribe button again. You then follow the same e-prescription steps. I'm going to go to the other tab, and in the other tab is the script archive. This shows you every time a medication has been prescribed. So if, if it's been prescribed five times, it will show five times in this list. If I go back to the main tab, here it only shows you the most recent time it was prescribed. If I wanted to resend the prescription to the patient, for example, the patient deleted the SMS message, I can right click on the medication and choose open. Remember, this is different to a repeat prescription. This is to resend the original prescription. A new window opens and from this, there's a few options I can change, but when I click Resend Token at the bottom right, that will resend it to the patient. When the e-prescribing window appeared, there were other options that you could utilize. Our knowledge base has the descriptions of each of these, but I will give a quick description below. Brand substitution not allowed indicates whether you believe a brand substitution is permitted. A pharmacist can sub substitute a less expensive brand, provided the prescriber has not indicated that a brand substitution is not allowed. Repeat intervals indicates the number of days between repeats. This field accepts numerical figures only. 
You can specify the repeat intervals for this medication if it is relevant. This may be required for certain high-risk medications. Authorization number is a state-based authorization code needed when prescribing S8 and some S4 drugs. The field name may vary depending on the location of your practice. Unusual dose indicates if an unusual dose is in place for this medication. Any medication prescribed where the dose is considered dangerous or unusual should be marked as an unusual dose. Setting this to yes acts as an endorsement of the dose. No initialing is required for an e-prescription. Active script list indicates if the medication should be included or excluded from the patient's active script list. Annotations is a free text field. This field is similar to writing a note on the bottom of a paper prescription. Unusual quantity indicates if an unusual quantity is in place for this medication. Repatriation authority indicates when a medication meets requirements for unlisted repri repatri repatriation authority. This is applicable for patients with a DVA card and where the medication is indicated on the RPBS. Emergency supply indicates if the medication is being prescribed under an emergency supply. If the emergency supply flag is indicated, a token is not generated for the patient. Max quantity authorized to be dispensed indicates the absolute maximum quantity which can be dispensed for this medication. Doctor's notes is a free text field where the prescriber can enter any relevant notes for the pharmacist. This field can be used to make notes that you would ordinarily make by hand on a paper prescription for the pharmacy. For example, in Queensland for prescribers, adding the word approved to a script for isotremion. One other consideration is Genie will prompt for the password when you're prescribing a Schedule 8 drug. This is the digital equivalent of the need to handwrite these medications using paper. Now, there are a few limitations when using e-prescribing. If you cancel an e-prescription through that web browser that popped up, it does not automatically mark it as cancelled in Genie. You can do this in Genie by right-clicking the medication in the script archive. A coming feature is to be able to set the status of the script within Genie. Now, there are some things that can't be sent through e-prescribing. These are, if you change the quantity of a medication, if you change a medication from PBS to private, or if you've added your own medication as a user-added drug, these cannot be sent through the e-prescription system as they no longer conform to the MIMS requirements. These need to continue to be paper-based. There appear to be some common mistakes when setting up e-prescribing. The first is errors in inserting the HPI-I and HPI-O into the relevant registration fields in Genie and other registrations outside of Genie. Remember, the HPI-I is your practitioner, your Genie user account. HPI-O is your organization. You need to make sure you put the numbers in correctly. This is another common mistake. If you're a practitioner who has multiple Genie databases, you will need to ensure that each Genie database has its own HPI-O. You cannot share an HPI O between Genie databases. If you are using a single Genie database in multiple locations, you are unaffected. There also appears to be a delay in setting up ERX. You may receive your ERX ID from the ERX team, but there is still a day or two required before it becomes active. If you are receiving an error in Genie when setting up ERX, you might just need to wait a little bit longer for that ID to become active. Our next webinar is on April 20th, where we will be looking at paperwork optimization. 
It's one of my favorite topics. It's where we can show you ways to save you time and improve efficiency with your letter templates and your procedures. On behalf of Genie Solutions, we thank you for your attendance today, and we look forward to presenting you with more webinars this year. Thank you again for your time.